Welcome to Let Me Know How It Is, a podcast about all things geek. Tonight, we're talking Hallmark holiday movies. Yep, you heard us right. Hallmark movies. They're great. You'll see. If you're a new listener, thanks for being here. You can check out new episodes every single Wednesday. And now, here's our show. All right, we are trekking into new territory tonight. I am Zach Slater. I'm Frank Melman. This is Tommy Smithereens. And I'm Clifton. All right. Hallmark movies. Hey, 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 hey. Where are you going? No, no, no. Come back. Seriously. <laughs> this is going to be fun. All right. Hallmark movies are doing super well right now. Uh, that's not even an understatement. Uh, what you may not realize is just how many of these come out per year. 40. That's the number of Hallmark holiday movies in 2019. Wow. <laughs> 40. 104 total across all of their stations, which is really quite astonishing. That's how popular they've become. <laughs> wow. So we're getting into it. So I was going to say that two members of our panel absolutely love these Hallmark movies and watch them all the time. So Frank and Tommy, what do you love about these movies? <laughs> <laughs> I personally am a fan of Lacey Charbet. So <laughs> Chabert, whatever her name is. <laughs> Lacey Chabert. Okay. Yes. So. It's not Frank and Tommy. It's no. me and Zach that watch yes. these movies all the time. Yes. This is what Zach yeah. weekends are like. <laughs> what we're talking about right now. Jeez. <laughs> so we've got all the, we've got a, a large depth of knowledge to share with these things. And, and Frank and Tommy are going to help us out. Yep. So you mentioned there's 40 a year. There's 40 this year. 40 Christmas movies original to Hallmark and Hallmark Mysteries this year. I've watched every. Hallmark movie for the past three years. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Jeez. it's committed, man. So in 2018, and this isn't like before that, I would still watch them, but just not all of them. It was three years ago, 2018, that I started consistently making an effort to watch every single new holiday movie they would make each year. And in 2018, there were 38 of them. In 2019, there were 40. And in 2020, the, currently, they're in the midst of, of 40 new ones. They've done 19 so far, of which I've seen all of them. During the right. pandemic. <laughs> During the pandemic. <laughs> and, yes. and we'll get into that, because it has been interesting seeing how they're, like, there's literally, I think they're still filming some for this year. Wow. Wow. But in 2019, I went an extra step and did not just watch every holiday hallmark movie i watched every original hallmark movie for the entire year <laughs> oh my god and that, that's that 104 i was talking about yeah that's that's everything that's like all yeah. the murder mystery stuff right like throughout the year wa- and every, i didn't yeah. watch the murder mystery so i only watched like the the romance ones i have okay. a question though i have a question real quick did you use the app i did i used the app <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the app blew my mind. So Tommy reminded me about it this time. So it's been helping me out this time where they have the, uh, the checklist app where you can set all of them to send you alerts when they're about to premiere, which mm-hmm. I do. But yeah, so the, in 2019, when I watched all of them, I watched the 40 holiday ones plus 39 other movies, not counting the mysteries, <laughs> not counting the murder mysteries and the cozies Jeez. and stuff, but just like their love story romance ones for a total of 79 movies in 2019. Is this like a confessional for you, Clifton? Because I feel like <laughs> I never knew any of this. And when you said, yeah, and Zach when you said, knew. Zach knew, because yeah, no. we always talk about this. Yeah. And when you said you, Hallmark you, Mysteries, I was like, I'm sorry, what now? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a mis- Clifton it's a Hallmark me Mysteries updates. Time. Oh, like, yeah. like, like, like I watched, I just finished this one. Have you seen it yet? Like, yeah. When they're good ones, when they're yeah. good ones. Oh, of course. Of course. Or, not or, the bad ter- ones. or particularly bad ones. Right. <laughs> it's the gamut. Right. Wow. But yeah, I mean, this year has been interesting because like I had always assumed they film a lot of these in the spring of the previous year. So like Mm. I would have assumed a lot of normally they would what's coming out now would have filmed like back in in March when they would still get, you know, cold, snowy weather up in ski resort towns up in Canada and a lot of places they shoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this year, you know, they with with pandemic and restrictions, they weren't able to do that. So I know some of these went into production like a month ago that are airing now. Yeah. Cause I follow, um, Danica McKellar on social media <laughs> and, and, and she's in these and, and geek connection on this one. Danica McKellar is the voice of Miss Martian on the young justice animated series. Yep. 
as well as being Winnie Cooper from yeah. mm-hmm. everybody's crush from back in the day. There's a lot of them and we'll yeah. get into wow. them. But we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll, try to, we'll try to keep up on the geek connections as we yeah. go along, see wow. all the shows and, and stuff. So I have a question. So is it one of those things like, I know, f- for example, at one point you and you and Zach brought up the fact that, um, uh, the actress, Rachel, was it Rachel Scarston who played Rachel, Car- um, Rachel Scarston. Yes. Alice from Batwoman. Yes. Was in mm-hmm. one of them. So is it one of those yes. things where they sort of feed into wherever it is in, in, is it pretty, wherever they shoot those shows, the CW shows. Right. And they, a lot of those people just sort of walk across set to a Hallmark set? Is that how that works? Because I, I assume that is a case a lot of yeah, the time because once uh, I found out that they can film one of these things in about two weeks, it ah. is because uh, just following along with people after the pandemic when they've gone into filming and they like see when they start production and see when they're back home. And, and it was about two weeks to film one of these. I figure they can. Yeah, like these people who are working on shows up in you know Vancouver and, and around can probably pretty easily fit one in in a break in in episodes especially if you know they're not doing much in a couple episodes and only have to do some small appearances they can fit a whole hallmark movie in there yeah yeah because i because because i know i mean obviously i know the hallmark channel exists and i it's one of those things where i know i think i've told you all this that my my parents like these they watch the you know pretty much i'm sure they they could match you you know the amount of hallmark <laughs> movies now that if, i know if they this. watch the mysteries they might beat me i, I don't okay. watch I, many of those and they, they may i don't know but I, the only thing I know is the last time we saw them, we were there and, and my mom's got a TV in the kitchen and she was watching one. And I think I told you this, that, that it had uh, Katrina Law in it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she's done a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I only know her from, I think what she's like, she was in Spartacus, I think. Yes. And then she was in, and then she was also in Arrow. She played Nissa. Right. Nissa Al Ghul. <laughs> yeah. Right. The, the other, the other daughter of the demon. <laughs> right. And I, and, and I, and I joked to my wife as I was like, I gave her one of like, you know, nudging her and we're like, Hey, I wonder when you start killing people. Cause she's in, you know, she's like in an ice rink, you know, <laughs> right. skating around trying to find love or whatever those movies do. Yeah. But yeah, that was my question. Cause, we, cause you had mentioned uh, Rachel Scarson as well. And I thought, well, if that, if that's the case and they just, you know, saunter over from arrow or Supergirl mm-hmm. or whatever. And then, She's in some good ones. Yeah, I think Rachel Scarston. Hers is from a couple of years ago. I think it was when she was still on the show Lost Girl on Sci Fi Channel. Ah, uh, right. Okay. She had a new one this year, though. Oh, Katrina. You're talking about Katrina Law. Yeah. Yeah. Katrina Law did have one already this year. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. She had one called Christmas with the Darlings, which aired I think, a couple of weeks ago. But it is it is a notable one in that it's their first holiday movie that has ever explicitly had a same sex couple. Oh wow! Okay, mm-hmm. and they're they're actually happening. That's happening uh, several times because a lot of these, like Hallmark's been very very behind the times, which we always joke about, and yeah. and we will bring <laughs> it up here. Like, divorce didn't exist in the Hallmark movie universe until like five <laughs> years ago, maybe. Yep. Wow. It's a lot of widows. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody was a twenty-five year old widow. <laughs> Because oh, they no. wanted, they oh, wanted no. to be able to tell stories with you know single mothers with kids because a lot of their audience was single mothers with kids. Yep. Oh lord! Uh, you know, okay. usually, <laughs> most obviously from divorce, but not right. always. And and that was a big part of their audience, so they wanted to make content for them. But they also mm-hmm. didn't want to admit that divorce existed. So twenty five year old widows with kids. Okay. Yep. Uh, Lacey Chabert <laughs> was in several of those. Yeah, if oh, wow. I remember right. And then. Uh, the other thing, like interracial relationships did not exist in Hallmark until basically this year. Yeah. Okay. Very true. Several of the movies they've done so far this year have had uh, lead couples of, of different races. And, and that's a huge step for them. Like it, they, <laughs> yeah. they actively like would. Jeez. I mean, there were there were rumors. There were rumors wow. around that that it was an unspoken rule in the company that basically they're like, nope, we don't do that. Right. And you would get filmmakers that would kind of like sneak the like interracial relationships into supporting characters and just not draw too much attention to it. And I think just that was their way of of kind of rebelling a little bit. They did that with gay characters as well, Mm -hmm. Uh where you'd be like in any other movie, like you would know this is a gay character in Hallmark. It's just still like, you know, signaling, but not quite there. And, And now they're going all in on it. So it actually is a huge step for them. But I think a lot of it is competition is driving them in that. So I guess in, in Hallmark Town or Hallmarkton, wherever this all takes place, <laughs> right? They didn't hear of Loving versus Virginia. They've never heard <laughs> no, of that landmark no. civil rights case that they never existed few, for they them. Were a few decades behind. 
Okay. On that one. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Or just refuse to acknowledge it. At this point. Yeah. Cause I remember in the past several years, like you would get one where it would be like background characters. Basically you would be uh-huh. able to say like the, they might start dating and, or talk about dating and, and they'd be like, well, that's your, that's your couple. But like, that's as close as it would get to the foreground. <laughs> right. Until this year, until literally okay. this year. All right. <laughs> but like I said, like they've been getting competition in in holiday movie market from Lifetime, from Up, from mm-hmm. Netflix, and like Netflix saw that they weren't doing these things and were like, "Well, like we got no problems with any of this stuff, so like we're just going to jump in there and do it." And I think that is kind of driving Hallmark to finally get with the times. Yeah, the 1960s. All right, yeah. very good. <laughs> But airing right now is the first time a mean couple is a same sex couple in a Hallmark movie. And it's in a movie mm-hmm. called The Christmas House. Yeah. Okay. I haven't gotten a uh, chance to watch it because it is literally airing while we record this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's pre- it's premiering it, today, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that one, it's, it's a story that involves like a multi generational family. And we're going to mm-hmm. see, you know, each, it's a, like the parents and then one sibling, one brother's. I think married to a woman or dating or no, he's the one that finds love this time. He's the single one. And then the other Mm -hmm. son is in a same sex marriage and they're looking to adopt. Right. And so like they do, it is actually a thrust in the story. Like it is, it is a pivotal, it is a pivotal storyline in this, in this movie. So that's a huge step for them. Okay. Hmm. So what do we like about these movies? Why, why, (laughs) why, why, Why does Hallmark get us on the couch week in and week out during the holiday season? What is it? Clifton? Uh, I don't know. It's comfort. It's simple. Like you know exactly what to expect every time you go into these. Yeah, and yet I still do it every time. Like I can tell you the plots of every single one of these before yeah. they start. Probably <laughs> they're, they're they're simple. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, it, it's kind of it's like TV candy corn. I think is is like is yeah. like what I'd say. You know. Yeah. Where, where or, or potato chips where I could eat like a thousand of these <laughs> and, and, right you know and not stop yeah it's like uh, the, the characters are not in peril for very long <laughs> you know like if there's a problem it's solved pretty quickly you know most of the problems are misunderstandings mm-hmm. again because like they they don't want to paint anybody as being bad in these so everything has to be uh you know just a comedy of error sort of type mm-hmm. of sort of thing like any conflict in a relationship has to be just a misunderstanding so that you don't actually have a bad guy i think that may be the next step moving forward possibly is is because my wife and i talk about this where it's like it, it's they they're they're always like already like with the perfect person right <laughs> in a relationship that just that just kind of fizzles out for whatever reason, right? They're just they're just not the right one, you know. Instead yeah. of that person like not being a good person, you know, I think that that right. may be the thing that they start inching towards next. It's like okay, maybe this person's not as uh, is not so perfect, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. You know, because the breakup scenes are amazing in these movies. Because <laughs> like everybody's okay with it, and like <laughs> and they just want the best for everyone. Like, you is know? it gonna be like William Zabka comes to town as 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 a love interest and then he's the guy that's not a nice guy and then it turns out to be he's like Johnny from Karate Kid. <laughs> I mean <laughs> is that what they need? Or is it gonna be like Thanos comes to town and then it, you know <laughs> if you're talking bad guys, I'm just trying to get the level no, of bad no, guys. Just, right, right. You know, like I more, I just, more I, the Johnny. Right, okay. right. I just think that there's gonna like they're gonna have done something wrong mm. at some point, you know? Okay. Yeah. That's my thing. I mean, and you occasionally get one where the conflict isn't just a misunderstanding that could have been resolved, you know, not like a three, st- like a threes company style, like confusion thing that <laughs> right. could have been simply solved if anybody just did anything logical. And and sometimes they do uh, have movies where the conflict is more than that and is actually something of substance, but it is like, it always surprises me when it is. Right. Mm. But I still love them. All right. So let's get it. So, so, so what are some of your favorites then Clifton? Let's, let's do this one. Let's go here. Uh, to get Tommy into this, we sent him a couple. We sent him uh, Christmas with Holly from okay. 2012, which is is uh, one of my and Zach's favorites. It, 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 I think it is my actual favorite. Okay. To be honest, I think it's yeah, my I mean, number it probably one. probably is mine, too. Yeah. So what's the premise? 
the, so to set the stage for this, and this is before the the holiday movies became such an industry for Hallmark. So like they didn't do many back in 2012. Mm-hmm. And it actually has production value. Like it doesn't look mm-hmm. like it's it doesn't look like it's just a TV episode. Um it's on location in in a cool place uh yeah. the the San Juan Islands okay. off of you know Seattle and Washington State. Uh, a town called Friday Harbor and it's based on a I guess a romance novel called Christmas in Friday Harbor, if I'm remembering right. But the premise of this one is that a young man has custody of his deceased sister's five-year-old. I think she's about five, six. And the girl won't speak. And he takes her back to where he lives on Friday in Friday Harbor, where his brothers can help him raise her. And, And that's what it's about. And it's around Christmas time. All right. So I know Tommy watched this one. Yes, I did. Yeah, this, this one leads up to Christmas time, I remember. So Christmas like only like appears at the end. Yeah, that's the it's really? much more yeah. Thanksgiving scenes actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you think, Tommy? <laughs> you you sure you want my opinion? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you sure you want to say this this is your guys' favorite? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. this one is absolutely. Uh, this of the two you mentioned, I like this one the least. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, was so, it was so bad. I mean, all right. <laughs> well, okay, hang on. So let's do it this way. Let Let's say what we liked about it, and then Tommy, you drag it through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. But Frank, let me say this: it okay. could have been called Three Men and a Little Lady. Okay, so it sounds like yeah, that's yeah. the basis of. It. Okay. But no, let well, them... that is the gimmick. Of all of these movies, every movie Hallmark does is some other movie, if not ten oh, okay. other movies. <laughs> Okay, but okay. but geez. Okay, no, say what you like about it. I can I, I for one understand what you like about it. But wow. I mean, I'd have to appreciate this fifteen years or twenty years early in my life before I even thought about kids in my life <laughs> to to understand why it's right. special. Because oh my gosh, the first ten minutes had my jaw dropping based upon what Holly is going for. But right. please. So so what I like about this one is, is like what Clifton touched upon. I like that it this one takes place in an interesting setting, right? And um which I come to appreciate the more of these I see, right? So like so like uh, an interesting setting that's not just uh 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 just anywhereville, I think does a lot of heavy lifting for me. Um I like the chemistry that the two lead actors have together, right? And um, uh, and 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 I like that this one is not centered around like Christmas as a gimmick. I like that there's an actual story and and uh, an evolution of character throughout this one, right? That just happens to be with like Christmas in the background and the holidays in the background, and it's not motivated by like, you know, someone who has a job as a Christmas decorator. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, she does run a toy store. One of the main characters does run a toy store. Yes. So it's a little, it's a little, it can still be Christmas related without being like a candy cane maker. Right. <laughs> I like the relationship uh, um, that he has with his brothers. I think like, like, I think it's, it's, um, I don't want to say real, but it's like, but like I've known brothers like that, that, that kind of like, you know, are constantly like poking each other. You know what I mean, and kind of and kind of uh, uh, ribbing each other and giving each other a hard time for everything. But there's he's a closeness like the, there. The smart academic brother, and then he's got like the rough like construction brother. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Who him I like the construction brother I like. Who so I'm looking him up right now. He's an actor named David Watkins. He plays Scott in the movie, and I like oh, him so much. Wait, David Watkins, Dana Watkins. Yeah. Oh, Dana Watkins. I'm sorry, I never heard. <laughs> And I, I like him so much that he's one of those that I'm like, why hasn't he played a lead in any of these ever? <laughs> yeah, he's not done much. I think I remember looking him looking him up before, and and a lot of these people like the the lead actress is Eloise Mumford, who's done a few of these, um, three that I know of, and right. and then apart from that, like she's delightful in this. Like I think yeah. she's very charismatic. Uh, she has presence. But she was also in the Fifty Shades movies, but I've never seen those, so I don't know <laughs> what she was in those. Yeah, it's it's quite a departure from Hallmark, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a little. And and the and the lead actor is Sean Ferris, uh, from uh, 
if anybody remembers the MMA movie Never Back Down from a couple years ago. I do not remember that right, one. Yeah, he was he was in that one. Mm. Um Yeah, and he's really good in this too. I thought. And they, they teamed up uh, they teamed up last year for another Hallmark movie called A Veteran's Christmas, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they reunited them a couple years later, yeah. Cuz they were such an all-star cast. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, Tommy, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right, now, you sure? Because I don't have to say anything. Sure. I can just nod my head in agreement like, yeah, great movie. But, Frank, mm. the movie starts off with the lead character, the lead female character, getting jilted at a wedding. Okay. Like, she's in her dress waiting to come out, and he never shows up. Mm. That's her introducing to him. Also, fine. You know, sad sack. We understand that she doesn't like men or whatever, doesn't want to date. Get right, that. right. But what kills me is the next scene in which they bring up Holly. Mm-hmm. Holly is being called into the principal's office because she doesn't talk or do work. Why do okay. you ask that? Because her mother died. <laughs> okay. Their solution to it was to put Holly in kindergarten because she's in the first grade. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like they don't understand the trauma for the little girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> On top of that, the mother died at the beginning of school year. So they're expecting her to get over it, I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 it, and just deal with it. Now, mind you, it's her uncle that's taking care of her. Right. So yeah. his solution is to take her out of her surroundings. Uh, what she knows, her friends in her school, <laughs> and take her to an island, a small town island, to be with her brothers. I mean, excuse me, his brothers or her other uncles who really haven't really watched her in this dilapidated house uh, where she knows no one. Like she knows that she has uncles, but not enough that the sister who died entrusted them with her. Does that make right. sense? So, so the, the idea is that Mark, uh, yes. the guy played by Sean Ferris, that he and his sister had a great relationship. Yes. Right. And so, and so, yeah, so it was, it was, and, and she was a single mom. So, so if anything happened to her, it was left that Mark would take care of her because, you know, why would she leave her to Mark? Right. Because <laughs> they're so but close. That's, but to me, that's crazy in its premise only because I'm thinking you no know, grandparents on either sides of the family and then they're so young and to add add a more haunt to it for me at least they had a the brothers have a tumultuous type relationship i like their family but they're always giving them giving each other a mess so to think that he has to bring the kid over there in order to garner help and they're not forthcoming with it is insane <laughs> and plus right. she already had a home he brought her over to a home that was still in disrepair. Right. So, okay. So, so I'm going to defend it here. So okay, okay, the okay. island, the island is where her mom grew up. No, I right? get that. Okay. And so, and so the thought process is like maybe a change of scenery that doesn't remind her of her mom currently. Right. Like, like of, of her current life. Right. And kind of take of her the to tragedy. where. Right. The tragedy, it'd take her to where her mom grew up and maybe she could have a similar upbringing there. Right. Oh, no, I, no, I get that. <laughs> no, and I the house, that. the house being dilapidated is that is so her brother, his brother, Scott, is a contractor. And, and the idea is that, like, he's buying this house and sort of renovating it to flip it. Right. So he so he's he's living in it as he's renovating it. And then so when when Mark goes over there and he's going to open like his coffee business and his diner over there. He's staying with his brother until they can sort of like find a find a space. But right? I get that. But he has to remind them that the kid's not talking. It's like she's still not talking. It's like they're they're <laughs> almost half oblivious to it. Like and then they blame him for it. Like she lost her mother at six. <laughs> this is just her way of showing the trauma. And what's crazy is. The school wants to give, I mean, the school never much mentions like psychiatric help or anything. Now, mind you, 
he's not even the dad. He's right. the uncle. Mm -hmm. So to think that he would be well aware of a child's needs that he's not even direct uh, descendant, you know, that's not his kid, really. So the sister puts all this responsibility on him without any of them helping. I get why he's the guardian, but it's almost like they were like an afterthought. And also, the little girl had never been to an island. So in this trauma, you take her to a whole new surroundings <laughs> with no type of um, um, recognizable. I mean, it, it's traumatic for a kid to go to a new school. Can you imagine going to a new school after sure, your mother died? I get it. <laughs> this was like <laughs> this is supposed to cheer her up. Okay, sure. I it's guess supposed to, the idea is supposed <laughs> to be that like it's a better place to raise a kid because. But the mother because he has fond memories of it. No, I get that, but so does the mother. But the never the mother never thought once to bring her there upon death. Well, life life takes over, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's push. Okay, let's push past that. Okay, let's push past that. But that's a really. I was like, really. The, the brothers, his other brothers, do think that there is a, that there is a little bit of like that. Mark is in over his head. On yeah, this. but that's there, 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 be. there is a little bit right, and and there and and they and they express as much where they're like he's you know he's not a dad he's never done this before you but know no, what but, I mean? But I agree. And, but yeah. they tear him down <laughs> as a result of it instead of added support in which he pushes on them. Okay, but let's 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 get away from that because I'm that talking about the conflict of the I'm movie. fine. I'm fine with that. Because you have to watching this, I've learned that you have to have a suspicion of disbelief. And they and their parents are dead. <laughs> That's the thing too, because you said they don't have grandparents. Okay, and I'm no, like, I, yeah, because I, because their parents are dead. I'll come, I'll come, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Their parents are dead, and then when and then when like when he has a conversation with Maggie about about like his sister and everything, and he was he says, well, she doesn't. She didn't really talk about her dad. She said that you know it was basically better that he wasn't there. Okay. Right. right. So there yeah, you no, go. So, so I think it plays fair. I think it <laughs> okay, does play fair. Yeah, okay. All right. That's fine. And the conflict but, is that they, the other brothers do grow up because they need to grow up too. Yeah. No, I get, no, I get that, but it's, <laughs> it's just, the, it's just that you needed to remind them. Yeah. This, your niece is still here. You know, <laughs> I need help. I've never been a dad. So come on. But it, it's, 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 it went without saying I, it to me. I just it, it introduced them to me as jerks, especially the construction the guy. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know, Scott. yeah, but it was like this is just petty. <laughs> Why they were so mad at him? I'm like, it's not his fault. <laughs> um, and then the love interest, her introduction after being jilted, she fires her store manager for not listening to her, but she does it. A week before store opening, so she manipulates her sister to replace the store manager, so she can still open on time. No, that was like the contracting manager. What do you mean by contract? She was manager? like, like she she was in charge. She was in charge of of like redesigning the store to open it. Yeah, I know, and she like, never. <laughs> no, I get no, I get why he's there, but that's I'm, I'm laughing because that was our introduction to it. It's just like really. Well, it's not her vision. It's not her vision, Tommy. So you gotta so, so get rid of her. So you gotta you gotta you gotta trim it. Okay. All right. Not a vision. Okay. But it was just crazy to me how the uncles didn't want to take responsibility for their dead sister's daughter. That was just crazy. Like <laughs> the guy came <laughs> God needed help. And they're like, nah, I gotta go to work. I gotta fix this house. You can take care of it. I'm like, what? That's insane. Okay, all right. That's fine. And it was, it was <laughs> okay, but, but the fact that he thought it'd be a better idea to constantly surround his niece with strangers was crazy. Like he'd always leave her with a stranger and do something, whether it's to talk on the phone and like, yeah, oh, she'll be okay. But, she just yeah, can't talk. I, I, I don't think I think you're putting too much into the into the brothers, like not being around her. I think it's one of those things that like they would see her on occasion. They just weren't around her every day. But it's but it's not like they never met her before. No, no, I get they I get they know she exists. <laughs> but, but, but after the death of her mom at six, wow! It, to me, the movie is all about abandonment. 
it was just crazy. Everybody trying to leave somebody else to be with somebody else. It was just woo. woo. Okay, so leave, leave it to Tommy to be the one person to get depressed from watching a Hallmark. Movie. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 it was just like, and then Maggie. Oh my god! At one point, I thought that the toy store that she was building or she made was a thirst trap to get Mark, man. <laughs> Because every time she focused on Mark, no one else existed. Mark never bought anything. He was dragged in there by his kid. And then she sucked in the kid. And then she she would then just get Gaga eyes for Mark. It was just nuts. Well, like of course, no point, they're meant to be. No, they're but meant it, to be. <laughs> it felt like the whole store was a thirst trap. Like, she didn't worry <laughs> about the store after that. All she worried about was how certain things in the store could get Holly to come in. <laughs> like Holly would come in and that's drag Mark in. He talked to the girl. And then and then one occasion, Holly left with something without paying for it. Like, oh, here, you can have <laughs> this new store. I'm sorry. It made me, it made me the first. It was just like crazy. Oh, my goodness. And then Mark was such a horrible, horrible boyfriend to, um, what was his girlfriend's name? Oh, I could tell you. His, oh, uh, my gosh. The, 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 the girl he's with at the start of the movie. Yes. I feel yeah. so sorry for her. Well, she's terrible, too, though, a little bit. No, but you can't <laughs> blame her. You, because it's not like... She, we don't know how long they were together. But it's not like that's the type of relationship she wanted. And it made it seem like she was the worst person for not having to have... A, a, for not wanting to have a boyfriend with a, with a little girl. Yeah, I could judge her for that. She was never given the choice. I could, I could judge. Yeah. But at the same time, though, I mean, like, this is this is the boat you're in now. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think that that's what more more than the brothers. I think I'm like, talk about insensitivity to her mother passing away. And now this is thrust upon him as well. And he's trying to do the best he can with her. And and she's almost as if like, like, so, oh, you're still doing the dad thing. OK, that's but still that's happening. The, like, but that's, but that's the thing. That conversation, there's a conversation at a, um, off the island in which he goes for the girlfriend. But to me, the conversation should have happened when he took custody. It's almost to me like he didn't have the conversation to avoid losing her. It's like if I, if I gain, if I'm with the girl and it was just me and her, really, we're dealing with each other, then I get a kid. I'm not telling her I'm about to be a dad. And if you want to, <laughs> but you wait three months after the girl is traumatized and move out before having that discussion, mm. <laughs> you wait three months to have a conversation and then get mad that she's not on board. Well, I think, but I think it's a thing that's building for her, though. It, what do you mean building? I think, th- I, th- I, th- I think her displeasure about it is is building that over she the didn't course want of the be movie. A mom. Oh, you get okay. All right. This Let's is a lot of assumption, though, too, because this is like this. We don't see, we don't see them in the relationship at the beginning, right? We're, we open up the movie with Holly being with Mark for a for a little while at this point. Yeah, I'm a fool. Shelby, Shelby's the girl mm. that his girlfriend that <laughs> that 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 leaves after three months. Of realizing now that he's his niece is dead, right? Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move past that. Let's move past. That. <laughs> well, let's move on to a different movie. So it's so, no, wait, wait, so, wait, wait, so wait, wait. this is not a spotlight on Christmas <laughs> with Holly. We got a lot okay. to, to to touch on. Okay. All right. But no. But the one I liked was the other one. Okay. What was the, the other um, one? Christmas. No. Mer- no, Wedding at Christmas? What was it? Mary? Marry Me at Christmas from 2017. Yes. Wedding at Christmas is probably one too. Or Christmas right, Wedding. Probably. Yeah. That was great. I liked <laughs> that one a lot. That one, that one I liked. It wasn't like anything like Holly. That one, I, that, I love that one. Top to bottom. That was, that was special. That okay. one's far more in the, their cookie cutter mold of what's become it their is. holiday movie industry. Oh, yep. no. That one I'm fine with because it dealt with misunderstandings of who they both were and they had to overcome it and it wasn't spotlighted the special event wasn't spotlighted on them but they're um they're rolling it i like that 
That one. And this one starred Rachel Scarston, who is Alice currently on Batwoman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So set us up. Give us the plot for this one. Okay. I like this one. Okay. So this started off with um, we have a um, somewhat of a famous actor who's known internationally, but that's not how it starts off. It starts off with a wedding planner um, first coming into her um, her business. And she's asked to set up a wedding, which she normally doesn't do because she's the designer as opposed to the planner. But due to the favor of the woman who wants the wedding, she um, takes the step in being a planner. What we later find out is the woman who wants the wedding. I should have wrote down her name. The woman who wants the wedding. She's Ginger. The, Ginger. Thank you. She's the sister of what's it, Johnny. Oh, is it Johnny Blake? Johnny Blake. Yeah. who is sure. a big star yeah he's it's basically like chris hemsworth essentially yes. like that's what they're yes. trying that's what they're trying to to get across like he's a, he's a big like action hero and then what occurs is while he's used to having the spotlight ginger is ginger the is ginger the love interest no Ma- maddie's the love interest ginger thank you, is maddie. his sister thank you right maddie's the love interest maddie doesn't want to capitalize off his stardom at all. She wants to keep it low key and focus on what she needs to do while he is used to people trying to eat off his stardom. I like that dynamic. Right. And through that, they build a relationship based upon seeing the true self of each other. Yeah, that one was nice. Right. So, so, okay. So, so knowing that, so, so basically what it is is Ginger is getting married and hires Maddie to be the wedding planner, right? And Ginger and what's his name? Johnny. Is that right? Johnny. Uh, their parents are also dead. <laughs> so yes, yeah. him oh being God, like a, of, a big yeah, action. A lot of parents. parents don't survive in Hallmark yeah. Universe. Yeah. A lot no, they of don't. They never do. Right. Um, Johnny is basically like fronting the bill for Ginger's wedding, right? And it's like super important to him, right? Because it's like she's the only family that they have. They have a great relationship together. And so like he wants like the best possible wedding for his sister. And so he is he is doing the, you know, money's no expense deal. And and in some cases that's running into creating like hallmark friction <laughs> with him and Ginger because it's not like what she wants, right? But it's but it's it's that one's so romantic because oh the the friction between uh uh Maddie and um Johnny is he thinks he should be one way when he doesn't have to be he can be himself mm-hmm. and she's giving him every avenue to be that and it's and that's what and that's what makes it a stronger connection between the two correct is that is that a right uh statement Zach yeah I think so yeah. it's a sl- it's yeah. a slow build. Yeah, very slow build. It's not yeah. like the. It's not like Holly. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one. I, yeah, I definitely enjoyed. It. This one I enjoyed. Almost to the point I stopped taking notes because I was just sitting there for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. But you guys didn't say the one big thing they do at the end that both of them did. Okay. Um, they all. It's like they don't kiss. They don't. It's like they'll get close. To the point that they'll smell each other's breath and then mm. something will stop it. Both of them. It's like, it's There's like always this, an interruption. Yeah. Yes. There like, is. Or, or one of them gets cold feet about. One of them, yes. one of them backs off. Yes. There but, is. There, but there's like an inch of space between both people and you won't get that kiss. It's like, ah, uh, no. This is one of those things. And, and Clifton, you can chime in about this because you've seen a lot more than I have too at this point, right? Like, I feel like this is almost maybe a mandate. Right. It With seems to happen very commonly where like where they essentially won't kiss until the end of the movie. Right. Usually the final shot. Mm-hmm. OK. Most of the time. Yeah. If they kiss within the first hour, which has happened a couple of times, like, you know, it's it's something's different happening. And mm-hmm. I'm sure it makes a lot of people <laughs> uneasy that normally watch these movies right. okay. <laughs> and can't take suspense. Jesus. What are some other good ones out there, Clifton? Let's let's run let's run down some of our some of our favorites some of the good ones to keep an eye out for if you want if you want to get into Hallmark Christmas movies, which we think you should, <laughs> right? But you have plenty of opportunity because it's running twenty four hours around the clock on two cable channels currently and will yes. still for the next month as of posting this. 
<laughs> but uh, like I said, all these movies are like some other movie or 10 other movies. They, mm-hmm. they pick a plot and, and they will do it and they will redo it and everything's familiar. And they do Christmas Carol a lot, usually mm. once or twice a year <laughs> in some form or another. They just did one that uh, premiered called A Nashville Christmas Carol. And <laughs> that one had Jesse Schramm as the star. But so, like that's that's a plot they do a lot. And their other favorite plot is the princess plot. Oh, oh yeah. I got two of these on my list. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the list of, of all the time, to- almost all the times they've done it, all the times I can remember them doing it. But I can see four times they've done their princess plot, which their princess plot is basically a, you know, American commoner young woman ends up in a, a first somewhat, you know, contentious relationship, somewhat contentious, you know, interaction with somebody that's a prince of some fake principality right. in, yeah. in europe markovia <laughs> yeah <Right>. markovia <laughs> although snl made the joke of caucasia last right. year in a skit <laughs> which is a little too perfect is he is is he kind of haughty is he kind of like you know a guy that's you know the prince is putting on airs of some sort at first usually usually oh, okay. all right very good and and the times they've done this one they've done uh a princess for christmas in 2012 Mm-hmm. Which starred Katie McGrath, who okay. uh, is Lena Luthor on Superman. Ah, yes, of course. They did A Crown for <laughs> Christmas, which was Danica McKellar. Mm-hmm. They did A Royal Christmas, which is Lacey Chabert. Oh, uh, voice what? of Gwen from Spectacular Spider Man and Satana on <laughs> Young Justice. Mm-hmm. And then let them know, did- Clifton. <laughs> <laughs> let them know. <laughs> And then they did Once Upon a Holiday. Oh. And that's, I think that was the most recent one they did. Okay. Because they did one this year. Uh, there was just like a slight twist on it. But I mean, this is such a popular plot. Like they do this around the year. They don't just do this at Christmas time because their non-Christmas versions are A Royal Winter, My Summer Prince, Royal Hearts, Royal Matchmaker, Royal wow. New Year's Eve, and Once Upon a Prince. <laughs> Wow. And then Netflix has even gotten in on this because they did The Christmas Prince 1 through 3, mm-hmm. which starred uh, <laughs> Rose McIver from iZombie. Ah, and okay. Princess Switch 1 and 2, which is sort of a twist on it. It's like it's like this plot mixed with The Parent Trap. Right. I was, isn't there one that's, isn't there a sequel coming out fairly soon to The Princess yeah, Switch? Yeah, I think I it just I dropped on okay. Netflix with Vanessa Hudgens. Get it while it's hot. Yeah, so you can, you can tune in for these. And in, in that one, it's like the the commoner American young woman just happens to look just like this princess or this you know noble that's betrothed to a prince, but it's a loveless marriage, and then the oh. commoner falls in love with the prince, so they switch places. So he can marry the one that actually likes him. I was always curious <laughs> about like why they never did like like an actual princess falling in love with like with you know like a common guy. Because mm-hmm. I think there, I think there could be something to be done for that too, as well, right? We're like we're, uh, uh, princesses taught to uh, sort of like relax and you know right. to appreciate the the a slower uh, way of life because she marries a you know whatever like a lumberjack or something. I thought you were going to right. say a slower guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> A simpleton, a common, a commoner. Yeah, like I don't know if they. I feel like they would have to have done that, but I've seen a lot of these, and I'm not sure. There's one, and I'm blanking on the name. There's one with um the guy that plays Billy from Battlestar, right? Okay. Where, she, where she's a princess, but she's kind of like she's she's in America, like in hiding, like nobody knows. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. You remember that one? Yeah, and was, she and I forget her name too. Like I never remember the names of any of these people, unfortunately. But she was in one of the Step Up movies. I think the third one, Secret Princess. Is that, is that what it's called? Right. Brianna Evigan is the actress's name. Yeah, she's really good. Okay, she's really good in it. Uh, Once Upon a Holiday. That is the one of the ones okay. I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's kind of a flip on it. And the one that is most recent, I was wrong. The one that they did this year is called One Royal Holiday, and that premiered uh, just uh, a few weeks ago. That's the guy with Gra- from Graceland, right? Which one? In uh, uh, One Royal Holiday. He's, he's playing, he's playing, a, uh, like, he's doing, like, a British accent, but he's, okay. he's, he's actually, he's, he's, um, 
He's a Broadway actor now, but he was on the USA show Graceland, I remember. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know where he was from. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, a Royal Christmas is my favorite version of this, um, followed very closely by A Princess for Christmas, which actually has Roger Moore in it. <laughs> it does as well. have Roger Moore in it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like I like both of those uh, an awful lot and both. Of, and again, and, and they both had um, male leads that I thought were really good that never popped in. Um, so in a royal Christmas, uh, Stephen Hagen is uh, plays Leo. And I thought like he's one again. I'm like, bring him back as more as more lead characters. He was really great. Uh, and Jane Seymour is in that one, too, as his mom. And she's awful. <laughs> she's good in the movie. I mean, she's a terrible person. Oh, for the, okay. right. <laughs> she's, she's like the evil stepmom yeah. sort of uh, sort of role. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. And then uh, a princess for Christmas had the guy who's doing um, uh, Outlander. Mm. So like, so like he graduated like really big from these movies. Yeah, this is the one in all of these royal princess movies that I've seen. Like for some reason, this one I just don't remember, <laughs> and I don't know why. It just blends in with some of the others to me, but. But I always like Lacey Chabert. She's always good in them. Yeah. And she's done so, so many Hallmark Christmas movies. Mm. Another one I like too, um, um, splitting off from the princess trope of these <laughs> is a uh, very merry mix up. And this one's got Alicia Witt. So this is one of those like misunderstanding plots. You remember this one? Clifton? I do. I do remember this Okay, one. yeah. This is a really good one. So and Alicia Witt does a lot of these movies, too. She's yeah, already okay. done one this year. Oh, has she? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this one's my favorite of, of, of hers. Um, and the setup for this is basically like, you know, she's, she's, going, um, she's going to meet her fiancé's parents. Her bad fiancé. Right. For, for, for uh holiday essentially and uh and he has to stay behind for business so they end up like taking like separate flights and she gets to the airport and kind of has like a run-in with uh with some other guy while she's there who ends up being like her brother right like he's like they spill stuff on each other and um uh and then they find out they're like oh like like we're, we're going to the same destination you know so like so i'll give you a ride over there and then they and they end up kind of um like the the fiance's brother, presumably. Yeah. yeah. Or is he? We don't want to spoil anything, but <laughs> we'll leave it there. Well, you can't explain what the mix up is since it is in the title. Oh, well, OK. So so essentially uh, it, they just happen to have the same last name and she goes to it. And it, it's not it's not the brother of her fiance. It's a completely different family. <laughs> so she's at the wrong family. She's house at the wrong for house yeah. for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. But they love her and it's yeah. so much better than her like bad business boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. She, she, you know, the, the, they're, they're welcoming to her. She loves the way that they do things. They're warm. <laughs> they're, you know, they're fun. And then, then they figure out she's at a stranger's house. Yeah, exactly. It's adorable. It's great. It's a good one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Uh, but yeah, but the one that I saw last night, so it's one of the new ones. It's a premiere. It's uh, the angel tree. Okay, I did. I've seen that one already. Now I watched. Oh, you did see that one? Okay, yeah, Yeah, that's with with uh, with the guy from Haven. Yes. Yeah. 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 Luke Bryan. Yeah, he's he's awesome. And Jill Wagner. Jill Wagner is the female lead in this one. I like this one too. So the setup for this one is is a small town. They put a Christmas tree up where people write down their Christmas wishes on a piece of paper, and they hang them up on the tree, and then the tree somehow miraculously makes people's wishes come true who's behind it somebody has to be behind it right there's an anonymous angel that's fulfilling people's wishes and so jill wagner's character uh for her article is given the assignment of going out to figure out who angel is this was on this premiered on their mystery channel <laughs> and i loved it i, I actually i love this one i thought this one was really really good because she grew up in the town or at least lived there for yeah. a time when she was a young girl, made a wish for the tree. Her and her best friend made a wish on the tree. The best friend's wish was that his family business would not be closed. Mm. And her wish was that she would get to stay in their town and her father would not be transferred on business. And, and her friend's wish comes true. So the family business is saved and hers is not. So she has to, she's forced to move with her father for business out of the town that she loves. So she's always that's that's carried with her over the years is that this tree did not grant her wish and why. Mm. Stupid tree. Right. <laughs> but 
but no, it is a cute one. It's, yeah. it's a good plot. I think it did come from, you know, some sort of novel as well. Yeah, I think so, <laughs> like too. Many of these things. Um, Lucas Bryant was the star on on one of the stars on the show Haven on Sci Fi Channel for a while. And, and like I've always liked him. Zach and I would go to New York Comic Con every year <laughs> when Haven was on and we would go to the Haven panel, even yep. though Zach had never seen the show Haven. <laughs> like it started by accident. Like we yeah. wanted to see whatever, like whatever was, the next panel was. I was is what so we wanted. hoping you were going to tell this story. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. Like every, like it started where we wanted to go to whatever panel was happening after. And we're like, oh, well, we'll just go in early and sit there for the Haven panel. Right. It, was, it was usually, it was usually the DC animated premiere. Yeah. When uh, they would show the right, new so, movie. So like whatever, whatever animated movie that the, the DC movies were premiering that year in the fall would get a premiere at New York Comic Con. So we were usually going to see that. And and by that point, like the floor was generally closed. Right. right. And the our evening. feet were tired from walking around all day. So we were like, let's just sit the sit in the panel beforehand that, you know, uh, because they don't clear the room, right? right. Which happened to be the Haven panel. Right. <laughs> I think I think two years in a row. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like their panels were so fun. <laughs> like, yeah. There's something about these guys that that even without ever having seen the show, like their panels, I'd, I'd watch the show, but for Zach, for not having seen the show, like their panels were still enjoyable. Like just the, yeah. the chemistry they had amongst the, the lead cast, which the other leads were Eric Balfour and Emily Rose, if I remember right. And, yeah. and then Edge, the wrestler Edge. Yeah. Uh, yeah he eventually up. joined and would be on these panels as well because he joined the cast. But uh, yeah, like he's a very charismatic guy. And in the final year of the panel, uh, the final Haven panel we went to was one where they were like, we're not like, we don't have anything prepared. We're just going to do Q and A's. And like, I, I hate the Q and A part of any panel. It's always the worst part right. of any panel is the awkward questions and, you know, it takes forever for people to ask them. And so we like, we were dreading that one. We're like, oh no, like this is a mistake. And then somehow they made that work. They made oh, yeah. <laughs> They it's made one of my a panel favorites. of of one of the cast members just wandering around the audience with a microphone, handing it to people, entertaining. <laughs> yep, it's so great. I I miss those panels so much. It was like yeah, like like Clifton was saying. Like I I I have not seen a frame of Haven other than what they show in those panels. And then by year three, it was like we're going to the Haven panel, right? Like, <laughs> it was a destination. <laughs> yeah. And he does have another uh, connection. He was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I think, for three episodes in the final season, the first three episodes of the final season. Oh, I did okay. not know that. Yeah, Lucas Bryant. He's, right. he's very good. A lot of people from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. have popped up on this show, too. Agent Ward did one. Yeah, I've oh, got no. that whole list, too. I've got a whole list of like the other geek connections. Most of them have come up for us already, just in the movies we like. Okay. But uh, I'll just go over the list again. We have Katie McGrath, who plays Lena Luthor on Supergirl, like we said, a princess for Christmas. Lacey Chabert, who's Gwen Stacy, and then Zatanna in Young Justice has been in Royal Christmas, and then so many others. Danica McKellar, we mentioned. One we didn't mention yet is Brandon Routh, who was, <laughs> oh. of course, Superman and Adam in the Arrowverse stuff, Todd Ingram in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. He was in the 2014 movie nine lives of christmas yeah okay that's a fun one too uh which is about him reluctantly adopting a cat ah. <laughs> or a cat adopting him as as usually works and then rachel scarston we mentioned in in marry me at christmas who's alice on batwoman katrina law you brought up mm -hmm. brett dalton agent ward was in once upon a christmas miracle which was based on a true story about somebody donating part of a liver and then falling in love with the person they donated the liver to. It was a cute mm -hmm. movie. Okay. <laughs> and Elizabeth Henstridge, also from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., ah. was in one last year, or was it last year or the year before? Year before. Called Christmas at the Plaza. I think okay. that was last year. Okay, it was last year, 2019. I like that one, too, a lot. Another, another one, interesting setting, you know, kind of uh, where, where they play with the formula a little bit on that one. Though she does have like the gimmick in these is that they have like a Christmas job and hers is she's like the historian for the plaza <laughs> or a department store. What is her job, actually? I just I, know she ends up researching Christmas ornaments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK. It, like in, in my head, it felt like it felt like she had like like there was a scholarly component to her job. Right. She's like a historian, like an right. archivist. It feels almost like she's a Christmas 
like she's a Christmas Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Mallory Jansen had one this year. Mallory Jansen, who was on uh, the show Gallivant, which I liked a lot, the mm-hmm. like medieval comedy musical. Uh, but she was also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where she played Ada and Madam Hydra in the whole framework uh, storyline from okay. that season. There, and she's going to like her. There's one more in Christmas at the Plaza, oh, yeah. too. Sorry, there's one more because Bruce Davidson is in there, too. Oh, okay. And he, yeah, and he was him. Senator Kelly in the in the X-Men movies. Yes, that's true. Yes, yeah. And Willard, the rap movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, going oh, way back. Willard. <laughs> Any more on the list or is that it? That's all the ones I could think of. Okay. From the Geek Connections. Yeah, there's a lot. More to come. More to come. It's good business. I'm telling you, man, like a lot more actors you're going to see popping up doing these things, you know? Especially when it is like like Frank was theorizing, pretty convenient when you're already filming in Vancouver <laughs> and, and you can right. fit these in, which I, I do truly suspect is what happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't know that they made them this quickly, too, was the other thing, which which yeah. kind of, um, like we were saying, the pandemic kind of shed a light on that a little bit, where it's, it's like Danica curtain. McKellar's like, is, is like, uh, I'm starting to film right now, and it was like, it was premiering in four weeks or something. Yeah, yeah. She, she said what movie it was, and I looked it up on the schedule, and it was one coming up like next weekend. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that she was there like six weeks ago filming, hmm. starting filming six weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah. So they, they know how to crank these things out. They do. It's big business for them. And like and, and like I said, and they're they're fun movies. They're 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 light and they're simple, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Like like I um I was I was reading an article actually in the in the New Yorker and and uh this was written by uh Kyle Chaka, I believe. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Shout out to Kyle Chaka. We'll post this uh article on let me know how it is.com if you guys want to check it out but he was writing about emily in paris the netflix show right. and and there was a component to his article where he was talking about like the rise of of what he was calling ambient tv right and it was essentially sort of like 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 the tv equivalent of like elevator music <laughs> okay right where it's like it, it's it's exactly the sort of thing right it's it's light it's easy to watch um problems pop up and are resolved relatively quickly right it's it's tv that that is to be accompanied with like doing stuff on your phone right <laughs> Think, okay. things things like that right so it's like so you tune in for for it, it's it's a semi-familiar plot and you know if you have to get up and check out for a minute in the other room you can come back and you haven't really missed much you can kind of figure out what's going on right so, ba- so basically stuff that you can fold laundry to. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, which, I mean, and, and that's what this, that's what this article is talking about, that it's like, it's becoming like a thing. It's becoming a lot more prevalent thing where almost that we feel that producers are maybe attempting to produce that kind of stuff now. Okay. Right. You know, it's just an interesting article, I thought, because, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of. TV that I would call ambient TV that that we sit through in our house, right. you know, mm-hmm. in our household, you know, I mean, and there's a moment too where, you know, you want to watch something that you're going to focus on. That's going right. to, that's going to take a little bit more of your attention because it's a serialized component and, and you're, you're engaged more with the story and it's more of a complex kind of storytelling. But then there's other TV out there where like, like, like we said, it's a familiar, it's a familiar plot. It's simple. It's fun to want, you know, you watch cause you're interested in the clothes or you want to see the Christmas decorations or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why my mother-in-law likes these a lot. She likes looking at the decora- decorations. <laughs> All right. You know, so it's just kind of an interesting, uh, like subdivision of television. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And they're trying to branch out and make them for more people now, not just, you know, white <laughs> <Jeez>. Protestants. <laughs> yeah. Because Jeez. like they do. Oh, no. The funny thing is, Hanukkah didn't exist in these for a while. Like it used oh to exist God. in the Hallmark universe and then it Jeez, stopped existing geez. and now it exists again. Jeez. Cause they did two, uh, two movies last year that focused on Hanukkah and they've got this year coming up love lights and Hanukkah starring Ben Savage. So Zach can look forward to that. Really? One. You're a big Ben Corey? Savage fan. Corey yep. Matthews is doing yep. this. He's doing one now. Oh, Jeez. 
It's a Christmas saying, miracle. <laughs> the Hanukkah miracle. <laughs> it's a Hanukkah oh, miracle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because they had done the one with uh, Joey Lawrence. Oh, whoa. That's a good one, too. That's one yeah. of my favorites that they never run anymore. <laughs> Where he, like, pretends to be engaged to someone over the holidays. So, like, you know, that when he when he goes home to his family, he'll be like, I'm in a relationship, so they'll stop bothering him about that. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing for her. So she'll be like, I'm in a relationship when she goes home to her family. So they agree to do it for each other. And and she is Jewish and he is Christian. So they, they did have Annika back then. But that's an yeah. older one that barely gets played anymore. Yeah, I think I think it was just it was like one of the first ones, I think. Not one yeah. of the first, but, you know, I mean, it's so early that I it's think in that the it's, early days, yeah. it's kind of aged out and they tend to keep the more current ones in in rotation we're like even christmas with holly now which like i said is is one of my favorites and thank goodness i have it on my dvr but um <laughs> but you know like it it doesn't pop up in the schedule quite as often um yeah you you would uh that that one with joey lawrence we were talking about frank you would like that one because mary lou henner's in that one. Oh, okay <laughs> yeah. yeah all right sure yeah yeah good old nardo yeah <laughs> Yeah, good. The, yeah, the other one that we, that we didn't talk about that I really like too is Ice Sculpture Christmas with Rachel Boston, who does also a bunch of these too. Mm. Um, and that's a fun one too that centers around uh, uh, an ice sculpture competition for a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it as that. It's fun. It's a good one. It's a really good. And she's really good in these too. So, um, uh, so I figure uh, if to, to, to start wrapping up then. Uh, we talked a lot about Hallmark movies, but uh, if that's not your your cup of tea, and if you actually want some other holiday Christmas movie recommendations, I figure we would make some right now. So anybody else have one that they throw out? Because I got a good one, but I won't go first. I'll let you guys go first. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I'm always a fan of the Bill Murray classic Scrooged. I think that's a great movie. If you've never seen it, it's a take on a Christmas Carol. You know. Um, What's his name? Is Frank Cross? The name of things are Scrooge in it. He's a TV producer. He's he's terrible at the beginning, and by the end, of course, he's he's much better. <laughs> Karen Allen's in it. Uh, Bobcat Goldblade. <laughs> um, yeah, it's terrific. I, I loved it when it came out. I think in like 1989 or 90. So it's been around forever. So it's a great. It's one. a good one. Yeah, it's a great one. It's a great version of it. Bit of an underrated one too. I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's one of those that that gets as much due as it should. You know, because I think you know it's it's one of my you know I love Bill Murray to begin with, but it's one of my favorite Bill Murray movies. So yeah, I love that one. That was great. But yeah, the other networks I mentioned have been you know jumping in on the Christmas movie train. Netflix especially is going hard on it, and they did one last year called Let It Snow, based on I think it was based on the John Green novel of the same title. Uh, so it's young adults, mostly like older high school kids as the characters. Uh, and it's, it's kind of an ensemble, a little bit like a love actually, in which you get a lot of characters and a lot of different stories going on simultaneously in this small town out West. Uh, it's got a great cast of young actors. It's got, uh, Karen and Shipka from Sabrina, the teenage witch. It's got, uh, Ned, I'm, Blanking on the actor's name from Spider-Man Far From Home and Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay. Uh, tons of people, but it's a, it's just like a really fun Christmas movie, I thought, with, with, a, with some edge to it and, and interesting characters and just like a good teen Christmas movie. Yeah, I got to check that one out. And I love teen melodrama and Christmas movies, so it's two of my favorite things rolled together. Trailer looked really good, I remember. I just haven't actually had time to sit out, sit and watch it yet, but I'm really excited to check that one out. Yeah, it's really good. Tommy, do you have one? I was gonna mention um, National Lampoon's Christmas. <laughs> What's a Christmas thing? But um, what comes to mind is not really a Christmas one because um, planes, trains, and automobiles. Sure, it's a good holiday movie. Yeah. Okay, it's just it's 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 one of those movies that I think has died over the times as, as far as notoriety concerns. But it's a, it's a great family movie. How it wraps up and things of that nature. You know, mm. it's it's it, it gives the spirit of of the holidays and what it really means to be with your family or to be thankful to be with your family so to speak that's what that's what i really like as a holiday movie okay all good picks all really good picks yeah i'm gonna do uh last holiday which is a queen latifah movie that came out in 2006 but it's actually a remake of 
movie of the same name from 1950 with Alec Guinness. Uh, mm. and so this is, this is a bit of a, a gender swap, uh, take on it. And so, so Queen Latifah is playing Alec Guinness. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and she plays, she plays like a, a, a woman who works at a department store who's been like frugal and saving, uh, up for her entire life and and all of this stuff and then she finds out she has a terminal illness and then she decides that she's just gonna blow it all right ah. and um and it is, it is a absolutely stacked cast with her in this movie it's got timothy hutton ll cool j giancarlo Eposito uh from our breaking bad and usual suspects uh notoriety and now the mandalorian yep alicia witt is in this one too <laughs> It's like a Hallmark movie without being a Hallmark. It movie. is. This is the, I, I, honestly, I sell it to people that like, if you like Hallmark movies and you want something that's close, I always recommend last holiday uh, and Gerard Depardieu as well. So that's one of my favorite <laughs> ones. Honestly, yeah, I love, I love this movie. I think it's so great. So. All right. So tell us in the comments what your favorite Hallmark holiday movies are. We want to hear them. Be sure to suggest the topic for the show while you're there. Also, please make sure you give us a like and leave a review on whatever platform you may be finding us. As always, you can find links and examples to everything we talk about on LetMeKnowHowItIs.com. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to us on YouTube. It'll help us to grow. And finally, you can like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LetMeKnowHowItIs. And follow us on Twitter at our show's initials, L-M-K-H-I-I. Thanks for listening. We will see you next week.